Welcome back to our SDS page Western blot series. Uh, right now we had our uh, we finished our SDS page gels and they're soaking in transfer buffer. When you're doing a transfer, you want to make sure everything is soaking and you also need to pre-cut yourself some membranes. So I, I just bring this out here just to show you the approximate size. I cut my membranes. I like them a little bit bigger than uh, the gels because we can always trim our blots later. Um, but you don't want to make it too big, right? So we've got this large roll. Uh, it's much easier to purchase or much cheaper that way, sorry. And then we cut uh, one membrane for every gel that we're going to transfer. In this case, we're going to transfer two. So I cut myself two membranes. Let it soak in transfer buffer. Keep your transfer buffer nice and cold. So don't bring it out until right before you set everything up. And then we have everything soaking. So we need uh, two sponges per gel. We need two filters per gel. We got our gels that we rinsed in distilled water now sitting in transfer buffer and of course our two membranes everything 10 minutes so we're doing a wet transfer things get quite messy so it's nice if you have a, some sort of tray like this cafeteria tray um, but I'm gonna do it without just to show you that it can be done but it's gonna get quite messy uh, you're gonna need a transfer apparatus thing you need these cassettes one per blot or one per gel that you're gonna transfer uh, black side is the negative side the clear side is the positive side and so you know always things go from the negative uh, to the positive so you just got to be mindful of which side you put your gel which side you put your uh, blot your membrane okay so we're making a sandwich the sponges are way on the outside the filter papers go next to that and then in the middle of the sponge and filter paper is going to be our gel and membrane so again keeping keeping uh in mind which direction we're going to go sponge goes first then goes our filter paper keep things wet all the time notice how i keep putting some water on there oh sorry not water transfer buffer right now remember it goes black side to clear side so i'm going to put my membrane because that's the direction our proteins are going to transfer so membrane first and then i'm going to put uh my gel on top of that, careful not to rip it. It helps, by the way, to put a layer of transfer buffer on top of that uh, that membrane, because uh, then when you pick it up and move it around, uh, it works much easier. Uh, I was being stubborn, so I didn't, so here I go. And then keeping in mind now that uh, you always want to know which way it's going to transfer. Generally, if you put your gel on top of your membrane, it'll look the way you want it to look. Right? Otherwise, it'll be backwards. But as long as you know which is the protein side little bit more transfer buffer filter paper goes down so we're just going to complete the sandwich and then whoops I hit the camera and then again a little bit more transfer buffer and sponge goes on top right it'll be a really tight squeeze so squeeze nice and tight close up our cassette and this goes into our transfer apparatus and then this will also be a tight squeeze this was actually really hard to do while I was looking at my camera but there we go that's one done. Let's repeat it for the second. All right. So gel number two, um, pretty straightforward. Once again, filter paper goes down. All right. So this is now a review. Uh, sorry, no, sponge goes down. Filter paper goes on top. All right. I mean, uh, I like to put it on the side of the um, the gel is the proteins are going to because in this way I can place my membrane down, and then when I place my gel on top, the I can orient the gel in the direction or in the way that I would like it to look. So I don't have to flip it backwards. Sometimes when you do it the other way, you gotta do that mirror image thing because if it, if I were to go build everything on the black side, which is a little bit easier by the way, cause that little handle that I have to move kind of gets in the way. Um, you have to flip it mirror image or your membrane's gonna come out the mirror image, right? So as long as you know, uh, and then like we'll see later, we're always gonna mark the top left. Um, this was my rip gel, which like I said earlier, it's not a huge deal. You can always just kind of piece it together, right? It's not important that your gel is intact, right? Because you can just kind of put the pieces together. And I've had gels literally rip in half, right? And you just place them together. The idea is that the uh, electrophoresis is simply going to transfer the gel, uh, the protein, sorry, from the gel onto the membrane that binds protein, right? So there we go. Did my best. Made sure that I have my... Uh, everything in the order that I want. And now we're gonna finish it off. A little bit of transfer buffer, make it nice and wet. Put my filter paper down. I'm gonna finish it off with my sponge, dribble a little transfer buffer, and uh, close her up. Now, like I said, I left kind of a mess. Uh, it, 
I was able to do it fast enough where it just didn't quite start dripping on the floor, but it was close. All right, so using some sort of uh, container would have been much better. And then everything goes into a gel tank and then you can use up all this transfer buffer. So I just chuck all the transfer buffer in there uh, and then I'm gonna get ready for transfer after I clean up my mess. And very importantly, uh, because of the heat generated, we put in an ice block to keep it nice and cool during transfer. Almost done now, same old power supply, just to top up your transfer buffer to make sure it's full. Usually I feel it a little bit too much and ends up leaking a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Uh, put on the lid, and then uh, unlike uh, our transfers in the past, or sorry, our, our runs in the past where we go with constant volts, uh, make sure that we go constant amp. So once again, get the darn cables out of the way. Uh, constant amp and we're gonna run it at uh, 0.2 amps or 200 milliamps all right so this power supply reads it in milliamps so 200 milliamps and then we transfer for 60 minutes so constant amps make sure it's 200 hit the running person and then you can set the timer to 60 um, but I generally don't just in case I don't make it back in time and now 60 minutes later Transfer is done, so turn it off, uh, turn off the power supply, and then it's just a matter of uh, unassembling everything. All right, I still got a little bit of ice. I always like to see that. That means uh, I was able to keep the transfer relatively cool during this process. Um, I have, uh, I take out the gel cassette, and then I just slowly peel back things. Uh, ideally, I'd have some sort of bin where I can put things away neatly. I'm going to fill these with something called TBST because I'm going to there it is, TBST, because we're going to do some uh, Western blotting after this. And then uh, I peel back, I take off my cassette. Um, I wasn't really thinking, but I should put it back in a way such that the filter paper, the gel, sorry, sits on the membrane. So oh, my filter paper came out. That's what I was pointing at there. Uh, but I take off my filter papers. I do like to have the bottom filter paper on, but like I said, it just came off slowly peel back the one touching the gel and I was I like to look at it so then that the gel sits on top and then now I cut my notches my top left I start to trim the blot right around the gel to make sure that uh, blah, 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 to make sure that my gel isn't too big if your gels are too big it makes your western blots a little less efficient and then I should cut the top left which I don't think I did but I will eventually because I realized I forgot to do it. Uh, you can save uh, the gel. You can mark with the uh, pen so as well. Uh, and this is my blot number two. I cut the bottom left. And then uh, there it is. Now I remembered. Don't forget, cut your top left. And this is a pre-stained ladder, so your ladder should have transferred. And you can see how it transferred very nicely. Um, and then uh, in that right orientation. So now this way, because of the way I transferred it, it's a uh, ladder on the left, that's lane one on the left, and then it kind of moves forward from there. Let's just repeat the process. I wonder if I was a little bit more careful with the filter paper this time. I was a little bit better. Slowly peel back. If you peel it back too fast, by the way, and then the gel sticks to the filter paper, the whole gel comes off, and you're like, whoops, hard to trim it. Right? Although again, we do have the pre-stained ladder, so it does transfer. Uh, once again, cut around the gel. Nope, I decided it's too much to cut. I think that's what I decided. Not sure why I did that. Usually I cut it with the filter paper. I may have been in a rush. Notch my top left, because this is my gel number one. And then simply trim. Place the blot in the TBST. Again, we can stain this gel just to see what's left over. And ideally you'd like to see very little protein left uh, in the gel. I, that one I totally ripped because I was rushing. I think I was trying to, I'm going to say, I was trying to prove a point. Uh, and then I place my blots in the TBST, clean everything up, ready for Western blotting. 